Hello and welcome to Physician Perspectives. This is Dr. Jeetan Bendar. I thought I'd put a small presentation on glutathione online because a lot of my patients and my colleagues have been inquiring about it. So here goes. Let me start by saying that all my presentations have information from published papers that are available online for free. So they have an image of the publications in most cases like this, as well as a reference to the paper at the bottom of the slide or in the slide. So let's start. Glutathione is a tripeptide made up of three amino acids. They are cysteine, glycine and glutamic acid. Glutathione is found in surprisingly high levels, 5 millimolar or more concentration in most cells. This cellular glutathione is similar in concentration in cells as fasting glucose and potassium. That makes glutathione a very important molecule in almost all cells. Before we get into more information on glutathione, it is very important to understand that oxygen is central or essential for life. But its intermediaries can be a source of disease. And this is through an unco uncontrolled rather, production of ROS or reactive oxygen species and more specifically of free radicals that can damage the structure of organelles and macromolecules like lipids, proteins, carbohydrates and nucleic acids. So oxidative stress is a cellular condition that occurs as a result of the physiological imbalance between the, the levels of antioxidants and oxidants. So to prevent the damage caused to the cells by oxidative stress, the body has a series of compounds called antioxidants that are characterized by preventing or delaying the oxidation of various biomolecules like proteins and nucleic acids. Therefore, oxidative toxicity is lower and less cellular damage happens. Now, glutathione is a key intracellular antioxidant. Although under normal conditions, almost 99% of cellular glutathione is in the form of reduced thiol or reduced glutathione. About 1-2% to 2 glutathione in cells is in oxidized form and increases only under conditions of oxidative stress. Glutathione exists in cells in two states, as a reduced GSH or an oxidized state, that is GSSG. The SS is the double sulfide bond between two molecules of, of glutathione. The ratio of glutathione, that is the reduced to the oxidized form of glutathione, determines the cell redox status. Redox is reduction and oxidation status of cells. So in a healthy cell or healthy cells at rest, they should have a glutathione uh, reduced to oxidized ratio of more than 100. And this ratio drops to 1 to 10 in cells exposed to any oxidant stress. So it is extremely important to maintain this high reduced to oxidized ratio of glutathione. And this is what the science is all about. How do you maintain this high level of reduced glutathione, both availability and the formation or reformation of reduced glutathione from its oxidized state? There have been a lot of noise and a lot of publications on the challenges of glutathione with various diseases. So in this, in this paper, for example, glutathione participation in the prevention of cardiovascular diseases, they talk about what we spoke about just now, about the 
reactive oxygen species, ROS and RNS, that is reactive nitrogen species. Basically all the reactive species uh, that we see uh, because of oxidation and, and other similar reactions. And also the importance of reduced glutathione as an antioxidant agent. So glutathione is very important in the prevention of several cardiovascular diseases. So in this paper, the authors are talking about the impairment of glutathione functions in the brain that are linked to loss of neurons during the aging processes or as a result of neurological diseases like Huntington's disease, Parkinson's disease, stroke and Alzheimer's disease. Here is a table of a tall order of the physiological and metabolic functions of glutathione. It works on enhancing the immune system, it works on prevention of oxidative cell damage, it works on prostaglandin synthesis, transport of metals across membranes and transfer of metals between ligands. These are very important in detoxification if there are too much metals in the body. It, it participates in protein synthesis, DNA synthesis and repair, amino acid transport and enzyme activation and many more. The list of physiological and metabolic functions of glutathione is very tall. So one sees a drop in glutathione related enzymes and the content of glutathione itself reduced glutathione in blood and tissue or diseased tissue. Here is a list of central nervous system challenges. So conditions like Alzheimer's, autism, bipolar, multiple sclerosis show reduced levels of reduced glutathione as well as tissue levels. I show this slide to drive in the point that glutathione also protects cells from oxidants through recycling of micronutrients such as vitamin C and E. This is an example of vitamin C where, the, where glutathione helps in the recycling of ascorbate or vitamin C. Here is a conservative list of diseases associated with depletion in glutathione. So the list contains neurodegenerative diseases, pulmonary diseases like COPD and asthma, immune diseases like HIV, cardiovascular diseases such as hypertension, myocardial infarction, chronic age-related disease such as cataracts, hearing impairment, liver disease, cystic fibrosis, and aging process itself. Glutathione is made available in cells in three ways. One is de novo synthesis, that is a cell itself makes glutathione for which it needs the amino acids glycine, cysteine, and glutamic acid, or it recycles the oxidized glutathione and converts it back to the reduced form of glutathione or it recycles cysteine. But what is also very important that whichever step you're looking at, it, they all require energy. So how do we make intercellular glutathione? How can we facilitate it rather? So we can, we can, we can give cysteine, but cysteine is a little unstable. So you give methionine as a precursor of cysteine or you can give NAC, which is N-acetylcysteine, to increase glutathione levels, or you can give SAM, OTC, or even give glutathione directly as a monoester, a diester, or newer forms of glutathione. One can also increase intracellular and intramitochondrial glutathione by decreasing the need for glutathione itself, which means decrease the toxic load on the body. The most obvious toxic load is alcohol consumption. Another strategy is to provide other, antioc other antioxidants rather to decrease oxidative stress. A good example is alpha lipoic acid supplementation, which increases mitochondrial glutathione levels even though alpha lipoic acid is not used in the synthesis or recycling of glutathione. Here is a summary of nutrients and food that support glutathione levels. Supplementation with alpha lipoic acid, curcumin or green tea, 
N-acetylcysteine, omega-3, selenium, vitamin C or vitamin E or foods like brassica vegetables such as um, cabbage or some fruit and vegetable juices or directly take glutathione itself which could be in various forms like liposomal uh, form which, which is very popular these days. Before I get into some clinical conditions where glutathione was used, I just want to drive in a very important point that collecting glutathione either from blood or tissue samples is a huge challenge because improper handling of tissue or a sample facilitates the artificial oxidation of the sulfhydryl group of glutathione. So let's look into some of the publications involving glutathione uh, usage in clinical conditions. So here is a paper published in 2021, Potential Use of Glutathione as a Treatment for Parkinson's Disease. This is a meta-analysis. So a total of seven randomized controlled trial data was involved with 450 participants. The authors state a, sig a statistically significant difference between the glutathione group and the control group in terms of a scale called as the UPDRS3 scale. UPDRS is used quite frequently in Parkinson's disease. They also state that glutathione improved, mildly improved motor scores in Parkinson's disease and without the expense of increased adverse events. Here is a very interesting publication randomized controlled trial of oral glutathione supplementation on body stores of glutathione. This was a six-month randomized double-blinded placebo-controlled trial of oral glutathione, 250 or 1000 milligrams a day, and they looked into glutathione levels in blood, erythrocytes, plasma, lymphocytes, and exfoliated buccal mucosal cells in 54 non-smoking adults. What they found out was that daily consumption of glutathione supplements was effective at increasing body compartment stores of glutathione, which is fantastic. They also looked at the reduction in oxidative stress in both those groups, that is 250 and 1000 milligrams per day, which was indicated by decreases in the oxidized to reduce glutathione ratio in whole blood after six months. They also went on to look into some of the immune parameters and they reported natural killer cytotoxicity increased twofold in, uh, in the high dose group versus placebo at three months. The incidences of fatty liver, especially NAFLD, has been increasing. So here is a paper. Reduced glutathione suppresses oxidative stress in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Five patients with fatty liver and 10 patients with NASH, that is non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, were enrolled in the study. 300 milligrams per day of glutathione was given orally to patients with NAFLD every day and an oxidative stress marker and biochemical tests were analyzed before treatment and one and three months after starting the treatment. They measured the levels of 8-hydroxy, 2-deoxy guanosine, 8-OHDG, which is an oxidative stress marker, and GGT. Before treatment, the NASH group had higher serum 8-OHDG and lower serum glutathione levels than the fatty liver group. Serum levels of alanine transaminase and 8-OHDG were significantly decreased after treatment in the NASH group. GGT was also decreased after treatment, although the, although the decrease was not statistic, uh, statistically significant. Now, the present study, which is a pilot study, demonstrated that antioxidant therapy with glutathione may reduce the pathological oxidative stress in the liver in NASH preventing the progression from NAFLD to NASH. Here is a paper where glutathione was used for skin whitening. Evaluation of the efficacy and safety of topical and 
oral glutathione in the treatment of melasma. Melasma is a common disorder of cutaneous hyperpigmentation. So 30 female patients with melasma were studied and they were divided into three groups. Group 1 applied glutathione cream 2% on the right side of the face and a placebo cream to the left side of the face twice daily for 10 weeks. <coughs> group 2 received oral glutathione 500 milligrams a day for 4 weeks and group 3 received placebo capsules for 4 weeks. They use a score called MASI that is modified melasma area and severity index and the patients were followed up for 3 months. So what they reported was a significant reduction in the modified MASI in patients treated with topical and oral glutathione. While patients treated with the topical or oral placebo had no response. So they also reported that topical and oral forms of glutathione were safe and well tolerated. So they, they conclude saying that glutathione is safe, tolerable and effective and, and effective white and is an effective whitening agent when used in topical 2% and also in oral forms in the treatment of melasma. Here is an interesting publication published in the Journal of the American Heart Association in 2021 titled Glutathione Infusion Before and Three Days After Primary Angioplasty Blunt's ongoing NOX2 mediated inflammatory response. NOX2 is an inflammatory marker. So, 100 consecutive patients with ST segment elevation myocardial infarction scheduled to undergo primary percutaneous coronary intervention were randomly assigned before the intervention to receive an infusion of glutathione, that is 2,500 milligrams per 25 ml over 10 minutes, followed by drug administration at the same doses at 24, 48 and 72 hours. So according to this paper, what's new is that the effect of glutathione infusion during ST segment elevation, myocardial infarction, reperfusion that is, has not been established. So what they state is glutathione administration has was beneficial for homeostatic control of the immune system pathways and blunted oxidative and inflammatory toxic environment, thereby favoring myocardial cell survival. I'll publish updates as we go along and I find more papers on the clinical use of glutathione. Until then, thank you for watching.